Welcome to No Longer Conformed, my online preaching and teaching ministry. We're studying the book of Matthew, the first gospel. In this session, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 27, verses 1 through 10, the sad end for the traitor. Let's read that passage as we begin this session. Matthew chapter 27, verse 1. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. And then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw himself, threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together and brought with them, bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of him who was priced, whom they of the children of Israel priced, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. It says, when morning came, the Sanhedrin waited until daybreak to make known their verdict, probably to avoid attention to breaking the rule against criminal trials at night. And then it says they delivered him to Pilate. Jesus had two trials. One was Jewish and religious. The other was Roman and secular. Rome reserved right of execution in capital cases, so Jesus had to be handed over to the Roman authorities. Pilate's headquarters were in Caesarea on the Mediterranean coast, but he was present in Jerusalem for the Passover celebrations, and so he oversaw the trial. Jesus was brought before Pilate, he was sent to Herod for a hearing and then returned to Pilate for the death sentence. Luke chapter 23 and verse 6 talks about it. It says, when Pilate, Luke 23, 6, when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt, and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other, for previously they had been at enmity with each other. This chapter opens with Jesus being delivered into the hands of the Gentiles. But the subject that's addressed in these verses is the sad end of the false apostle, Judas Iscariot. And let me give you four points to consider in the, what I call the sad case of Judas and his miserable end. First, we see the proof of Jesus' innocence, verse 4. The first part of it, he said, I have sinned 
by betraying innocent blood. If there was a person who could have been called on to give evidence about Jesus, Judas Iscariot was the man. He knew if the Lord had done any wrong, either in word or action, he was a chosen apostle of Jesus. He was a constant companion in all his travels. He was a hearer of all his teaching, both public and private. Why then did Judas not come forward to testify? Why did he not stand before the council and make charges? Why did he not try to prove that Jesus was a criminal? Judas' conscience wouldn't let him. As evil as he was, he knew he could prove nothing against Jesus. As wicked as he was, he knew his master was holy, harmless, innocent, and blameless. He knew the absence of Judas Iscariot at Jesus' trial is one of the proofs that the Lamb of God was without blemish. He was a sinless man. Second, see the evidence of an insincere repentance. Verse 3, then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Remorseful. That's an interesting word. It means that Judas felt the burning sting of his own guilt, but it wasn't genuine repentance. There's a godly sorrow that leads to repentance, but Judas' remorse was not that kind of sorrow. This was different. It was demonstrated by his suicide. We're told Judas was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. We're told he went to the priest and said, I have sinned, and yet it's clear that he did not repent to salvation. Third, see that sin brings no fulfillment. Look at the first part of verse 5. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. Judas threw the silver back into the temple, the price he placed on Jesus in betrayal. He went away in bitterness. The money brought no pleasure the whole time he had it. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. It said that sin is the hardest of all masters. It promises much, but delivers so little. It pleasures, it's pleasures for a moment, but its consequences are lasting. Sorrow, remorse, and even death. Galatians chapter six, verses seven and eight. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And then fourth, see what the misuse of privilege produces. Look at the second part of verse 5. He went out, he went and hanged himself. What a horrible death. An apostle of Jesus Christ, a former preacher of the gospel, a companion of Peter and John, Judas committed suicide and ran into God's presence without forgiveness and without the covering of Jesus' blood. The picture of the mercy seat and the sprinkling of blood to cover the broken law in the Ark of the Covenant. In God's perspective, when he views it from heaven, in that 
that Ark of the Covenant with its cover, the mercy seat, were the tablets of the Ten Commandments, the law which man had broken, which kindled God's wrath. And every time that God looked at that Ark, looked down at that Ark, His wrath was kindled against that sin. But when the high priest came on the day of atonement and sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant. Then when God looked down from, from heaven at the Ark, he no longer saw the tablets of the broken law, but he saw the blood of the sacrifice. And when God looks at our lives, before Jesus Christ, he sees the sin of rebellion against his ways and his wrath for the punishment of sin is kindled against us. But Jesus went to the cross, a perfect sinless sacrifice to take the punishment that we deserve to shed his blood. And as we by faith receive and apply that blood to our heart. When God looks at our heart, he no longer sees the sin of our rebellion against him, but he sees the blood of his holy, sinless, only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And he no longer has anger to bring wrath against our sin because it's already been dealt with in Jesus Christ. And we receive the forgiveness that's provided by that payment on the cross by faith. And we are seen as righteous, as righteous as Jesus to God. No sin. In, listen, Judas went into eternity by suicide without the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, without the blood applied to the sin of his life. No sin is so sinful as that against a clear knowledge of the truth. There's no sin that's more provoking to God. Scripture records that some of the persons removed from this world the fastest were those who sinned so deliberately and so blatantly. Lot's wife, Korah, King Saul, Ananias and Sapphira, and Herod. John Bunyan wrote that none fall so deep into the pit as those who fall backwards. Proverbs 29, verse 1. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Well, let me ask you, what is the state of your heart? Are you tempted to take your relationship with Jesus for granted? Are you inclined to give money a prominent place in your heart? Are you playing with a particular sin, planning to deal with it at some later time? Pay attention to the sad end of Judas and be careful not to head into a shipwreck of your own. Judas went toward repentance, but not to salvation. He confessed, but not to God. He did not say, I have sinned, Father, against heaven. 